The plant I want to introduce you to in this video is known as Corpuscularia Leimani, and its nickname is Ice Plant. Now it's the one here in the middle that you can see that has kind of bluish gray green leaves and they're sort of stacked on top of each other, alternating directions. I have it paired here with Mammillaria gracilis fragilis, or thimble cactus. But the Corpuscularia leimani, its nickname is ice plant, which is actually quite deceiving. It does not do well in freezing temperatures. In fact, it can only handle temperatures down to about 30 degrees Fahrenheit, or a zone 10 if you live in the United States. So it's one that grows most actively in the summer as well. So it's all sorts of confusing in that way, but this is a really great succulent for beginners. One of the reasons why I love it is because it shows you pretty easily when it needs to be watered. So as always with succulents, I recommend that you use the soak and dry method where you're soaking the soil completely and then not watering again until the soil is completely dry. But hopefully you can see here a little bit that the leaves on this guy are getting a little bit wrinkled toward the bottom. And when that happens on some of the upper growth of the plant, it means it needs more water. So it's a great one to just let it sit and wait for it to tell you what it needs. But as long as you follow that soak and dry method, you should be good to go. It has fairly typical watering needs for most succulents. So as long as you're not letting it sit in wet soil, it should be good with fairly frequent watering. It's one that can do well in full sun and also partial shade, and you can actually grow it indoors as well. If you are growing it indoors, I highly recommend that you cut back on your watering significantly. Definitely waiting until, until it starts to look a little bit like this where it's starting to deflate, because that way it won't be growing as quickly and so you won't notice it stretching out as much. Right now, this one has fairly compact growth. The leaves are really close together, but if it's not getting enough sun, both indoors or outdoors, it will start to stretch out and you'll actually see the stem in between the leaves. Now, it's not necessarily a problem, but generally it does look best to have the leaves more compact and it's generally a healthier option for the plant as well. As it begins to stretch out, the growth gets a little bit more weakened and so your plant is a little bit more susceptible to getting infections or pests like mealybugs. You can propagate this succulent simply by cutting off one of the stems, letting it dry out for a day or two, and then planting it up in dry soil. It can grow to be about 12 inches in height and in width, so not a gigantic succulent, but it can still get to be a fairly sizable plant. It's one that does work well in arrangements with other succulents. Uh, like I mentioned here, I have it with the thimble cactus, but you could also combine it with echeverias, or if you're growing indoors, I would recommend pairing it with um, some Haworthias or crassulas. I would love to know what you're doing with this succulent. Let me know if you like it or dislike it in the comments below. It's one that has kind of an unusual shape and texture to it. Some people like it and some people think it just looks odd. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and share it with all of your succulent loving friends, and I will see you next time.